What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. Very humble channel. Been on the internet for a very long time. I thought I would go back to the basics and talk about what foods I recommend for a ketogenic diet and for a carnivore diet. And I think I'm going to do a specific video about low carb because that's a whole nother animal. But let's start off with saying that a ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. It's not a high protein diet. This is where a lot of people get things wrong. Uh, people have developed over time a phobia to the fat and the science behind a keto diet is gone gone people will literally say how am i going to lose weight if i eat fat on a keto diet then i ask people if they understand what keto means they say no and i say it is short for a ketone and i ask do you know what a ketone is no this is most people and i explain that it's a unit of fat from your body or what your body can convert in what you're eating in dietary fat. If you are trying to get into a state of ketosis, so you have the keto diet, that's just a slang word. It's actually a ketogenic diet. You're trying to be in a state of ketosis or you want to be ketotic. This is where you get your body to burn fat, the fat, the fat as fuel rather than your collagen under the skin, bone marrow, muscle, having your reproductive, your ovaries, essentially your testes be affected by cortisol, which is your body eating itself. We don't want that because that creates immune issues, hormonal issues. And if you're having immune issues and hormonal issues, then all the problems start happening like thyroid and reproductive hormones and you can't sleep you've got skin issues you have no strength you develop osteopenia osteoporosis and the list goes on and on reproductive hormone hormones like uh you know fibromyalgia no that's pain but also um uh, fibroids or endometriosis or pcos so yeah it's important important to understand what a keto diet is before you start trying to find the food. Because really, if you have, let's say, diabetes or insulin resistance, and you're using a ketogenic diet to drop your insulin, or you're trying to drop body fat, then eating the type of food and the lifestyle that you live as in a 24-hour day means everything. I do consultations with people. I've been doing consultations. And of course, did I mute my phone in this this uh, video? No. And I'm going to do it right now. Basically, if you don't factor in, for example, that's a client right there. And this person is trying to find out if they have histamine intolerance. And I said, well, use your glucometer. So this individual used their glucometer and then said, okay, my glucose dropped. So why is my glucose high to start off with? And I said, well, what time did you take your blood sugar? The response was like, oh, whoa, this is really complicated. And I'm like, yeah. Once you have the understanding of food, blood sugar, your lifestyle and ketones, and the science behind it, what your existing health is, then it's easy breezy. It seems difficult, but it's really not. Let's go into the food. The types of foods that I recommend are very important because people are still trying to get away with 80 carbs on a ketogenic diet. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You cannot drink wine. I don't care if it's straight liquor. That's going to make you hypoglycemic. You can't eat ketchup. Uh, <laughs> I mean, literally, you get have a taste of it just for the fun of it. And people are thinking, oh, but this product, which is what I don't think people should be eating products, this product only has um, four net carbs and two grams of sugar. And I'm like, it's too much. And they're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, two grams of sugar. That's in like a ketchup 
that you're consume, consuming per serving is going to tell your brain that there's still glucose around, even if it's small, it will defer to wanting, wanting to continue to use glucose rather than ketones. That is the reason why we become a bit of a purist in the beginning, because you are, you are truly trying to get your body to understand uh, blood sugar stabilization, insulin regulation, and then lipolysis, the breakdown of fatty acids to be used as ketones, so ketogenesis, to then have your body heal. The foods matter. That ketchup or that sauce, or that soy sauce, or that whatever sauce that you're getting, or tahini or whatever you're getting in the supermarket, and people aren't looking at the labels to try to understand what they're putting on their plate. So I really recommend for people to get rid of all of that and stick with your basic cruciferous family. Cruciferous mm -hmm. is a fibrous plant. Most of them are green. Now, some of the cruciferous family, like cabbage, will have like purple cabbage. And some of these other things like bell peppers can come in three different colors. And of course, the lighter the color on a bell pepper or a paprika will be indicative of how many grams of sugar and how many how much fiber. If you take a plant like a broccoli and you stick it in your mouth raw, it's just going to sit there forever if you don't chew it. If you stick a piece of bread in your mouth, it's going to start melting immediately. Amylase in your saliva, which is an enzyme, is going to start breaking it down. But it can't do that with broccoli, even though it's considered a carbohydrate because of all that fiber. And that is something we have to consider when we're trying to choose our vegetables. That's why you wouldn't do something like mm, a bunch of yellow squash. There's not a lot of fiber and that raises the carbohydrate content. Or let's say cooked carrots, even raw carrots have too much sugar. But if you took cooked carrots, you're cooking out the fiber and it becomes just like sugar, caramelizes. Same thing with onions. That's the reason why people, I recommend leek or spring onions and you're eating the green part rather than the bulb. Everybody, everyone does the opposite. They do, they'll do the bulb, the white part, and toss the green part. But your body really finds it difficult to make ketones and use them. People who fast, which I think I'm going to do a video on this, people who, who are fasting, they think they're in ketosis because if they're not eating and then check their blood ketones, they're up. But the problem is, is that no one's checking their glucose with their ketones. You make ketones, they go up, they go down. You look at a urine strip and you'll see that the urine strip is turning purple, which means you're making the ketones, but you're not using them. So every little thing matters. And the food obviously is the first concept that people consider, but it's also your lifestyle. If we go and break down the foods, you want the brassica family, the cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cabbage, the asparagus, the um, let's see Brussels sprouts, asparagus, cabbage, broccoli, um, a, a little bit of celery, which is not a brassica family, but it's very fibrous. Little bit of cucumber. Tomatoes are problematic because they are nightshades, and people with uh, thyroid issues tend to do very poorly on tomatoes. They are very um, histamine. High, uh, a high histamine food. And that's another thing you have to consider is the, the histamine issue with some of these plants if you're doing a keto diet. Now, even if you guys are doing carnivore, somebody said to me, I had an interview recently and the woman was like, you're basically carnivore. And I'm like, because I'm eating just like avocados and meat and fat, or should I reverse it? Fat, then avocados, then the meat. I said, well, if I'm out at a restaurant and I, I have asparagus, I mean, I don't care. It may not be that often, but I still have it. And so uh, people might ride the line, the line, and people are very dogmatic with saying, oh, I'm a strict vegan or I'm a strict carnist. Whereas, you know, people are running into issues, not having any cruciferous vegetables or any plant source fiber, not to poop, but balance the gut microbiome. And that's why I always say ride the line of carnivore for the long term. And for the short term, use a carnivore diet to bring down any inflammation that you might have had 
from God knows what, five billion things, including the food you were eating prior to doing a carnivore diet. Now, let me pull up an image of some of these cruciferous vegetables, the benefits, the pitfalls, the anti-nutrients. Well, let's take a look because a lot of you guys just don't know the breakdown of them. I thought a visual would be pretty awesome. So let's see what we got. All right. These are considered. Now, I, I got this off of the Mojo website just because I needed something that was a visual. And that's for the Mojo, Keto Mojo to test your blood sugar uh, and ketones. So right here we got, start with this list with arugula, broccoli, cucumber, mushrooms. Now if you look at these, they're mostly green. You get the radishes, which is the, the red is just the skin. Um, somewhere I think there's tomato. And I think we need to go and break things down for people to understand what they can actually eat. Okay, so let's start with... Um, arugula, arugula has, it's crazy per cup. It has 0.7 grams of carbs. So arugula is super, uh, approved. And the only problem is when it's not cooked, some people are having issues with any of the, uh, the anti-nutrients in the plants, but if you don't, it is very low anti-nutrient, but it's, it's low in carbs. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's got vitamin K, vitamin A, but the A is not retinol. It's very low in retinol. Folate, which is B9, calcium, and potassium. That it does. All right. The next one is broccoli. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's make sure you can see this list. Yeah, you can see it. I think you guys can see this, right? Okay. We have broccoli, which has 4.3 grams. No, my... I'm rather 11 gr uh, grams of carbohydrates but then if we do the net some like to do total so that's that would that would be considered a high but if you take the fiber just 5.1 and you minus it which is going to bring us down to 6.1 uh so a little over six or just like six grams of carbs that's in that allotment so if you think about it when you're one to one, like if you're doing, if your body is doing, well, if you're doing five, if you're doing five grams, five to six grams of carbohydrate, your body will release enough insulin to match that very easily. But once your carbs start going higher and higher and higher, the body has more of a difficult time to match insulin without the over secretion of bolus amounts of insulin. And this is the problem. This is why your ketchup and your simple sugars, when you're not dealing with net fiber, should not be in any type of ketogenic diet. We're trying to balance your blood sugar and get into ketosis because too many carbs will blunt your keto adaptation. Let's get more into it. Cucumber has uh, 3.8 grams of carbohydrates per cup, which is great. Fiber is 0.6, so there's no fiber. So it's pretty much like three grams per cup and you got to be careful just got to be careful because some people will have a glucose spike even on cucumber a cup of it and it contains vitamin c and vitamin k a little bit of magnesium and potassium but in this breakdown doesn't explain how much potassium uh let's see here mushrooms now you guys shouldn't be eating mushrooms if you have really bad candida yeast infections or histamine but if you know that you have gotten your candida and yeast under control. Then you can do mushrooms, which have 3.3. We're very low in carb uh, carbohydrates per cup, one gram of fiber, so it's like two grams. So it's uh, got vitamin D. No, I'm sorry, these aren't fat soluble. Low, low, low. B6, yes. Riboflavin, niacin, and potassium, yes. Asparagus has 5.2 grams of carbs per cup and 2.8 grams. Uh, a fiber, which is going to take us down to uh, 3.6. So um, per per cup, that's pretty low. And our allotment for carbs, really, if we're doing net, is 15 per day. So we're well well within the um, net 
Now, like I said, some people just do total just to be sure that the carbohydrate count is very low. But if you're doing net, you're in your 15 grams allotment. Now, um, vitamin K and uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to say A, these, this is not retinol, this is keratin. Vitamin C, potassium, K, uh, C, and potassium are in uh, asparagus. If we talk about sugar snaps, these are nine grams of carbs. That's too high. It's just too high. It doesn't say the amount of sugar here as well. So snow, uh, sugar snap peas are not ketogenic. I don't care if they're on this website. Um, eggplant also has grams. I'll do another video where I'm going to break down the sugar, but this eggplant is not ketogenic. Mustard greens are, look at this, 2.2 grams of carbs with a 1.8 of fiber. So you're like getting literally no carbs. This is a very ketogenic plant, mustard greens. Uh, we got K in it. We got vitamin C in it, uh, folate, and calcium. Now, some people have got histamine. Just slightly cook that biatch. Summer squash, unfortunately, can be uh, high in sugar, but the sugar is not listed here. It's just mis listing the grams of carbohydrates uh, at 3.8 grams. So if you had a very small amount of it, it could be in, like mixed it with another vegetables vegetable. Let's go over your Haas avocados. The Haas avocados have, now that everybody has said different, it's 13 grams, somebody said 12 grams of carbohydrates, 13 grams. Um, the fiber is 9.2 grams, my people, and the fat is uh, 21.4. Do not count the carbs in avocado. There's so much fiber. The rate at which the carbohydrates hit the blood is so slow. It doesn't have a glucose spike unless you have a histamine reaction to it. So avocados have K in it. They have C in it. doesn't say if it's K, K1, K2, K1 probably. Vitamin C, vitamin E, potassium. So, and monounsaturated fats. Avocados are awesome. All right, let's break down some of the anti-nutrients. Oh, it's like lightning right now. Made me a little shudder a little bit. Oh, good Lord, have mercy. So sulfur-containing compounds, so for those with asthma, sometimes don't do well with arugula. Um, they are arugula is goitrogenic, which can block iodine from the thyroid. Broccoli is also a goitrogenic plant, unfortunately. Um, let's see here. Cucumber, I think is low in anti-nutrients. says uh, eggplant has solanine, which is an alkaloid that has toxic if effects if you eat too much of it, but we've never heard anybody have a toxic reaction. It's just eggplant has too many carbs. Mustard green has some anti-nutrient summer squash. Let's see, Haas has a little bit of oxalates and it's low oxalate people. Um, there are oxalates, obviously, also in arugula. Arugula, people don't realize. Uh, obviously, uh, broccoli is a goitrogenic, which blocks iodine in large amounts and raw. Cucumbers have oxalates in them and phytates in them. You guys don't have to stop. Like, think about it. Cucumber has has oxalates, phytates, nightshades, lectins, goitrogen, salicylates, and saponins. Oh no, 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 no! My bad. I'm reading this wrong. It does not have these. So cucumber is low in anti-nutrients. Jeez, I completely got that backwards. Okay, mushrooms have lectins in them. Asparagus has, oh, oh it's a very low anti-nutrient plant. So it doesn't have oxalate, phytates, nitrates, lectins, goitrogens, salicylates, or saponins, which is great. That's awesome. So that's why I always, Recommending asparagus on a keto diet. Uh, eggplant, that's a nightshade, blocking iodine from the thyroid, not good. 
Mustard greens contain low levels of oxalates, so you don't have to stop them, just have to watch out. Uh, moderate to low, it says. Summer squash, doesn't. it's pretty low. And I, that's why with people who've got histamine issues, I always, in the beginning, recommend asparagus and a little bit of zucchini or squash. And I mean a little bit of squash. Uh, so the, people try to argue with me that, that avocados have high oxalates. They so do not. It's so low. And all of those, phytates, nitrates, lectins, goitrogen, salicylates, ponens, very, very low. And that's why they're so great. They're amazing. So as you guys know that oxalates are, crystals are formed when you have oxalic acid that binds with calcium in your blood. This is like shards of glass and it gets in your eyes and your breast and your vagina, gets in your joints and your muscle, makes you feel horrible. Oxalates are horrible. They create kidneys, kidney stones, phytates. Um, these are binding to minerals like calcium, iron, zinc, and making you freaking mineral absor uh, malabsorptive, which is awful. Saponins like that are in artichokes. These are the bitter tasting compounds. And um, it doesn't say here what saponins do, and I forgot. Um, and those are the most of them. Phytates. Phytates are nuts. Like I said, they take calcium and zinc and iron and magnesium out of your body. Lectins are found in nightshades, nightshade vegetables like your basic um, eggplants, tomatoes, peppers, lectins. These are the effect of less. Okay. The effect of le lectins cause digestive issues in people, histamine issues in people, Oitrogens block iodine. They're obviously in the brassica family, the cruciferous vegetables. Salicylates are found in fruits and vegetables and spices and berries and citrus fruits and tomatoes and peppers and cinnamon. So this can affect people with asthma, gastrointestinal issues, and any type of inflammation like joint pain or like where you're looking inflamed or broken blood vessels around the no nose and mouth. Yeah. Move this image around. Kale is very great hygienic, my people. So the, the ones that I really recommend are avocado, asparagus, broccoli in, in, in moderate amounts, uh, cucumber in moderate amounts, radishes. One second. Let me see what radishes have. So radishes, we have um, oxalates and phytates and lectins and goitrogens. So small amounts, but it has vitamin C in it. <laughs> That's why. And the thing is, you guys, some people who like people who come from veganism, they are freaking destroyed when they're trying to do all these varieties of plants on a keto diet. That's why people do so well in the beginning on a carnivore diet because they might have uh, a natural inflammatory reaction, low diamine oxidase, histamine, or if they have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and then they now are trying to eat these plants and they're bloating and the, they have a leaking gut, the holes, the, the gap junctions have opened up and the holes on the wall of the, the small intestine are so big that you're bloating every time you eat these vegetables, then eat smaller amounts. And if you guys know for certain that you don't do well with most of the plants, which is why you went to carnivore, you want to slowly titrate up. Because like I said, eating a little bit of fiber each day is going, or every other day is going to help 
balance the microbes, the good bacteria in your gut because you don't want bad bacteria or fungus to overtake because there's nothing for that good beneficial bacteria to attach onto because you don't eat enough fiber. And that's why you're finding people who are doing carnivore diets start to become bloated when they range because they'll do it for like weight loss and then they'll do it for two years and then try to reintroduce some of these plants are like oh kind of bloated because now your body cannot deal with the anti-nutrients diamine oxidase lowers you have a bacterial imbalance in the gut some people don't like when i say this but it's just the way it is this is what i've experienced with so many clients that at this juncture it's fact to me this is it, my guys, my guys and girls. Thank you so much. All of this information is going on the challenge. I believe I'm going to start signups in August for a September 1st. It's not officiated yet, but it's almost officiated when I'm going to start my 30 day challenge. I'm going to put all of this very well organized each day in your challenge information that you're going to get. And it's pretty much a personal best challenge. So you don't have to like be challenged with other people. It's challenging yourself. And I'm figuring out that I think I might want to do a retreat for the winners of this challenge. And also, um, I'm going to do incentives for people to sign their friends up as well. And uh, this is it. This is my whole body of work being put into a challenge. And then, of course, the book. The book is done. It just needs to be photographed and edited. Um, well, nothing's ever done. What am I saying? I'm still refining it when I'm doing all the research for the challenge um yeah life is good life is freaking interesting but life is good it's always what you make it always remember beyond just the vegetables and fruits on a keto or carnivore diet i definitely don't recommend doing carnivore for the long term without getting enough fiber so you can have prebiotic grow in the gut and if people tell you that they're doing great and they've done it for 15 20 years they're not being honest I'm sorry, it's just the way that it is. And when you really press people, you get the truth. Energy, sort of. I've been working all day, it's storming now. I was like trying to fix everything on my land before the storm. If you guys wanna learn more, go to stephanieperson.com. You can sign up for a consultation and I got you. I've been working with over 8,000 people over the years. I'm a dinosaur, if you go back to my old video catalog. I'm 55 going on 56 and I remind people that I'm turning these ages because I get new subscribers all the time. And then, and then they take away subscribers after I get new ones. Uh, you can also sign up for a course, which is only $15 a month where I cover all three, all three diets, low carb, high fat, keto, omnivore, and carnivore. But I'm going to do low carb, high fat as a separate video. And you can catch me at Stephanie Ketogenic on my Instagram, Stephanie the business person on my Facebook fan page. And y'all people, I got like two more videos to do, so I'm out. Peace.